Welcome to episode two of the 2024 World Putting League season. I'm JT Tilly, and today, Pro League Network brings to you a new era in competitive mini golf. After five events in 2023, we witnessed a showing of dominance by the one and only Joey Grable. His game evolved so rapidly, it created a cult following in the mini golf space. However, new competitors look to emerge as WPL introduces the Survivor Series. Last week, we saw a favorite Gary Hester struggle mightily through 18 holes, while Tim Talley surged his way in the clutch at sudden death. Today, the remaining six competitors will compete for a shot at the final on April 2nd. Who do you think will survive? Let me tell you something. It's Joey versus the field in my mind. Joey is Tiger Woods of PGA. He's the Lance Armstrong of uh, bicycle racing. <laughs> well established, Joey does not take steroids, at least as far as we know. <laughs> I've been eating lots of spaghetti, pizza, bacon gravy, and meatloaf. I've been training really hard. Let's introduce our commentators, Rob Pozzola and Zach Phillips, as they give their breakdown next. Joey Graybill, Bristol, Tennessee. Michael Rutledge, Wall City, Tennessee. John Powell, Kathy, South Carolina. Go Eels! Welcome back to event number two of the World Pot League Survivor Series. I'm Zach Phillips, joined here today by Rob Zola to help you break down some betting and walk you through the event as it takes place here today as these final competitors of this field of six look to lock in their spot at the final event coming up April 2nd here today at the Hawaiian Village Pineapple Course. We talked about it last week, but we'll talk about it again here today. It's considered one of the toughest courses of the North of North the beach there uh rob now we're gonna get into the field are you still riding with greg newport here as your pick this week well i i think greg newport and joey grable are closer than the odds indicate yeah i'm gonna ride with john ace ventura i'm going deep on the board here and the way that ventura plays, i think is very conducive to winning this type of event lots of progression so i'm going to launch out this time ace ventura. well when joey hears that he's saying to himself rob don't break my heart. My breaking heart. Let's head on down to him on hole number one here to kick off event number two. I mean, look at that mullet. We have not seen that out of him yet here uh, on the World Pot League Series. I'm going to have to go with the, the mullet maverick as the new nickname <laughs> for, for Joey there. As he gets things started. Catches. Oh! Drops that one in using and every you know part of the hole. He's, he's laughing right now. He knows he got a little bit lucky there. I think he just grazed that right rock. See the fist pump. Uh, and off to a great start in terms of, I mean, this is one where I'm disappointed if you don't get an ace. It's not that like, the expectation is that you're going to ace it. But because it is the most aceable hole on our course, you really want to start off strong. Yeah, not only is he going to be happy about starting this one off with an ace, but... You no, know, he's thinking in the back of his head that scumbag Pizzola. And there you go. Two straight aces. Two for two. To start off hole number one. This is a hole that I didn't see aces in until the sudden death of the last event. And that actually ended up being the, the Rick Alessi there. Because we didn't see aces. You see two, and all of a sudden Alessi is an AP and that ended in his, his day. And you wonder if Rob are just like feeling the pressure now. I've seen the first two ace. And he just misses that. I wonder, that's got to be a very tough spot to see two people who are favored over you, both yeah. ace, ace, and now you have to follow that up. This is a key deuce point here. We did get three on the first hole last time. There we go. In for two. Good start. And what is it that those putters are called there, where you pick it up out of the hole? I don't know the terminology, but I like it. Yeah, I, I like them as well, and uh, using that uh, as his device there, I think it's a pretty good strategy. Conserves some energy as we go along with taking a look at the leaderboard here. Now, Rutledge walks away from hole number one, even par, John Powell and Joey Grable, both able to knock down aces to open up this event. And yet again, I mean, just talking about the fact that these guys start off strong. This is a, a strong field that we're looking at. Guys who are capable of putting up low scores, 
bring in aces. Uh, it feels like that's kind of the ideal start for Joey Grant. Three of the top six are going to move on today. So of, of the six putters on course, your top three will go to a sudden death playoff. One of them will win that, and they will be secured to the finals where they will meet Tim Talley. And our two highest wildcard scores from previous events will fill out our final four event on April 2nd. We're on to hole number two here, Zach. And with this hole in specific, it's just a tough one yeah. in that you're not going to ace. It, what the putters are going to want to do here is just not blow up, essentially. Yeah. You're aiming for as short a deuce putt as possible. If you look through the rounds at the Masters and the U.S. Open, the scoring average on this hole was 2.76. It's the highest handicap hole on the course. This is a real big test. And this is where we saw things kind of start to come to a head in event number one when we got to the sudden death. We were talking about, hey, keep it safe, get out of there, even par, do whatever you can to just nestle this thing up close to the hole. Results in kind of a little bit more of a pressure situation here. Now, obviously, with these guys in this event here, in this field specifically, you know that they're able to handle that for the most part. But it's definitely one of those ones where hey, you come out of the one, you're feeling good. Now you're going to go into this hole that seemingly is easy it, it, it opened up get there it didn't even park pretty smoothly but if this thing goes sideways this is a this is a tough hole to have as number two where you've now got your got in your own head a little bit thinking that was an easy one and i i just fumbled it. there's a couple of holes on the front nine number two and number six where you're just going to really want to prevent that up. and those are the types of holes that can completely ruin your confidence I speak from experience being on a course before where you put up a four or five, and it doesn't matter how good you're putting, once you put up that big number, it's very hard not to get in your own head yeah. because you just drop shots. You know you're going to have to remain competitive. So that's a, a real challenge with those particular holes. But so far, hole number one, we see Joey Grable ace that. Not, and like, not even a great putt. He would, would say that to us back in the tack there, but it seems like he's always able to one way or another yeah he was able to do that you know that after last time when we talked about the fact that i'm i, I talked about at least the fact that I'm not the great that you you agree i don't know how much i needed to hear that but you agree joey sent me a text dinners on to, uh fix my putting the stance how i'm looking at the ball so no, i appreciate it i uh, no, he didn't he didn't suggest that but uh he did he did give me some hey Here's how you to set up the base. Here's how to look over the ball. Kind of get your shoulders set up. So you know, it, was, it was good advice. I, I appreciated that. Uh, Rutledge here on number two. I wonder if we're going to break down the attire. There. We're in the Tiger Woods red. Rutledge. Sunday, the Sunday red. red. Sunday red. <laughs> Rutledge is up on the bank there with his feet positioning and, and place you know what? the rock. That's a tough leave. That's a tough leave. You want to try to get it and nestle it as close as possible. And you can see the unfamiliar unfamiliarity of this course. Look at the amount of notes not like has been right here. As uh, <laughs> I mean this, he didn't play a competitive round here at the Masters of the US Open. Some pretty big wow. cards. That that looks like what used to happen when I would reach my elementary school backpack after being handed a bunch of sheets of paper and not not realizing what how many had thrown in there uh, but Rutledge knocks that one in and walks away with yet another par here you know what putting in the work matters because all these deuce putts will add up you'd be disappointed to not get particularly on this one but these putts add up as we see Grable on the tee here at number two and again the goal right here is just to nest in as close as he can to the hole. It's a feel putt, precision putt. Yeah. You know he's feeling himself with that clean looking mullet. He's gonna put that one real close with an opportunity to get in. Just doesn't get there. Pulls up just outside, but he's gonna have himself a nice easy tap in to walk away with another par. And you gotta think he's gonna feel happy. But I mean, it doesn't go in. 100% doesn't have to sweat over the second putt. I'll call that a perfect putt. I know it didn't go in the hole, but that's about as good as you can get. And he's looking pretty um, cool and collected right now out there on the course <laughs> with the shades, the mullet, looking very comfortable out there as uh, 
We're heading into number three. Grable on top, one under through two right now. And hole three here, the bank shot, something that we saw in the first course. Players will be looking to play that bank off of the yellow brick in the brass back. It is aceable, roughly one in five times. You will see an ace here. Typically, you're not going to see too many bogeys. So this is one that they'll try to get after here. And obviously Powell there uh, picking up the stroke on that last hole now moves to plus 600 outright. We're going to continue to get live odds updates thanks to Bet365. Uh, if you get that ahead of time and you're looking to get it some action down now while this is taking place, head on over to Bet365 for live in-play odds on today's event number two of the World League Survivor Series. But take a look at Michael Rutledge lining up this button. And that's Sunday Red. He looks ready to go. I mean, it's certainly an interesting stroke. He's he's very low to the ground. His back is almost at a ninety. Well, and he and he kind of holds it a little bit like um, hockey stick. But that's the bank. Oh. But you know that's the putt. A little bit unfortunate there. I think if he catches even a bit of that hole that goes down, he's yeah. Yeah, right weight, right pace there. Uh, just not able to get it to go away with a par. Event number three here, so just kind of stay with the mix. I, I feel like this is what we saw out of event number one. It's not a bad strategy, um, but taking a look at Grable, his whole three stats here, 33% ace, 67% par. Um, I think he's going to be going for it. This is going to be one of those ones he's going to want badly to continue to open up the lead. Can you get the right kick? It's the bang. And, and misses to the swing side is Rutledge. Very similar there, but just a little bit, a little bit further outside than what we just saw from Rutledge. And you can see the disappointment when you don't make aces on the holes where you have a chance to make ace. Yeah. Yeah, that one uh, is going to bother Joey, but knowing him that he's not going to carry that one with him. And based off the way that... Grable's hair is flapping there in the wind. It the does. wind might be playing a little bit of a factor here today, <laughs> more so than we thought. That's our that's effectively our in stadium flag uh, is when they cut to Grable's hair. So that'll give us a and a good update of what's going on live on the course in terms of the weather conditions. But there's John Powell with his opportunities. A leaf comes in the way at the last second and oh, oh, just can't get it to go. And all three of these putters just missing by the slimmest of margins here, which is very impactful for the overall hole-in-one odds on this course today. Set at 15.5 for the six putters that we're going to see today. This is one where you would have typically wanted to see at least one drop. Kind of balances out the two aces that are coming in or have come in on hole number one so far. Well, what do you make of that hat that we're seeing out of John Powell there, Rob? And that they told us be aware of some interesting headwear choices. I like it. I personally am a fan. Uh, the shade seeking sniper. I'm gonna have to go with for uh, for John Powell out there. Uh, we saw Tim Talley win the first event with a hat. Yeah. Maybe Powell's trying to follow suit. Although that's that's been like, you know, that's been his thing. I'm not I'm not yes. suggesting he's copying Tim Talley. Out right, there. right. That's what Powell was known for. Well, now through uh, three holes, we're heading on to. Uh, hole number four here. We see the live odds board continue to adjust. Michael Rutledge out to plus 1,200 now. That continues to move for their money coming in and also as things have continued to change. But with these guys only one stroke back of Grable, I mean, Rob, are there, is there any way you'd be looking to play live here? Is there anyone that you'd be looking to go after? Is plus 1,200 too much of an adjustment? It's possible. I would more so be looking to someone in the second group today, teeing off later on. Right. Who kind of has knows where they're at as we see another oh. putt that just inches by by Grable there. This is a front door putt. You got to get the speed perfect. And you really have to challenge that little hill on the left side. It's a very, very weird putt. You'll see the putters line up right to the right of the tee box. Try to barely miss that hill to the left and just get the perfect speed but it's really delicate and you can see just a fraction off there from grable yeah and i mean i don't want to say it but you know it's one of those where it's, it feels early here a little bit like grable's kind of in that position where you know you see it all the time here as toronto residents and leafs fans get goalied 
you go into a game, you're playing really well, you're taking it to carrying the pace of play, you're right around it in terms of these putts. You have these ace opportunities, but they're just not going down. You're not scoring goals. You're not putting it up on the board to continue to give yourself that lead. And at some point, if these guys continue to hang around, Powell and Rutledge here, they might be able to catch you and take over this group. Yeah, absolutely. The one person, though, that I don't think those misses will have an impact on is Joey Gray. Of all the people on the World Putting League Tour, he is the one that just doesn't seem to get phased by a lot of these things. So I'm sure he's upset about those misses, but I don't think that they're going to really spoil the party for him going forwards. I think those are just an afterthought at this point. Here's Rutledge to close out hole number four. He's got that one on direct line, and it goes. Wow. That'll even things up there. He's going to tie Joey Gribble at the top of the leaderboard, both sitting at minus one here now. And Shows the ball to the camera. Let him know. <laughs> let him go. know. Rutledge is a guy that can go low, and he went off as high as 14-1 to 1 at Bet365 prior to this event. An yeah. extreme long shot because he doesn't have the course history there. He's now down to plus 850 at Bet365. And honestly, looks like he's done a pretty good job practicing this course. He seems to know yeah. the putts pretty well in the early going. Maybe the guy that is a valuable price right now at plus 850, considering he's tied for the lead. Yeah, and just as we said, just coming from plus 1,200 ahead of that hole there. So you see that movement after he gets an ace there on hole number four. As we're going to head to hole number five here, Rob, can you take us through what we might see and how these golfers might approach this? Yeah, there's many different ways to play this shot. But ultimately, this is uphill the entire way, and it breaks from right to left. You could go with a bank. You could go with front door. Uh, there is possibility of rolling off the back and back in. So there's a lot of different ways to play this shot. But another one where it is aceable about 17% of the time. This is one John Powell himself has not made. What 100% power rate. He's going front door. And he's and he going, gets the ace. Yep. He got it. The front door putt. Interested to see how the others will play it today. We did see in the first event, some of the putters preferring to go for that bank shot off the yellow brick. Yep. It looks like Rutledge is lining it up on a very similar line here. Whether or not he is going for the front door putt remains to be seen. Well, Rutledge just coming off an ace on hole number four. Let's see if he can knock one down here on hole number five to make it back to back. He is going front door. I think he's a little short. Yes. Yeah. Looked light. And it's a delicate putt, but again, Not happy with himself. The there. disappointment. Yeah. I think he knows he had the line and just didn't have the speed there. I think he's got to talk to uh, Grable here and consolidate that book. <laughs> that is. Uh... It's an impressive sh set of papers he's got on him. I mean, that's like having another two pounds <laughs> in your back pocket. I don't know how that affects the putting stroke. It can't help. It's like, uh, I believe, isn't it, uh, George? He's got the, the, the wallet the wallet and yeah. the back problems. Yeah, maybe this is, you take that out and it eases the, eases the operation for Elledge. Old school Seinfeld reference right there. Yeah. Big Seinfeld fan. Well, Grable to close this hole. Hole number five out. Seven percent ace on hole number five. Sometimes there's just certain holes where you feel really comfortable with them. And for Grable, this is one of them. And Ooh. he doesn't get it to And go. another one. <laughs> if you add up the misses yeah. from Grable on the on his first putts today, it's probably less than a foot total on the four deuces that he's had yeah yeah well I, do you think that this is one where now i mean it is still early we're only through five but 67 percent of the time he's acing this hole as you saw on the screen there is he now disappointed that he didn't ace this one we've seen a couple close misses but this is the one that feels like hey this is what you normally do you normally knock this in and one and you don't get it done here from my experience he's just very level-headed you can start to see the smile is gone on this hole, by the way. As soon yeah. as he passed, picked up that ball of the hole, the smile is gone. He's no longer turning the camera and laughing. But he is pretty level-headed. So I'm not sure how much of an impact it's having, but all three of our putters so far off to a good start, one under through five. Still, 
a little bit of disappointment, though, from each and every single one of them in that they've been so close to two under, three under so far. In some cases, even four under for Grable with some of those misses. And you wonder what the headspace is going to be like going forwards here into hole number six, which is, like I mentioned earlier, very inviting, tempting to make an ace. But this is the hole where you don't want to go long and get too close to that back wall where you could potentially have a real challenge with your second shot. Well, Relage tees off, and he's going to leave that one long. Not going to get a bounce off the back. He and, will get relief, but... And he knows this is bad news. Yeah. This is the one thing you don't want to do. He will get his eight inches of relief off the back there, but look at what his stance is going to look like as a right-handed putter with that pillar in the way. It's just very challenging at this point. Well, whether you're watching with us live on the Hammer HQ YouTube channel or over on the worldputtingleague.com, if this is your first time tuning in, you can see on the screen there, they're going to continue to help explain some of the rules. But as Rob just mentioned, you do get eight inches of relief away from something like this. This is a difficult decision for Rutledge, how he's trying to approach that. You just see him go left-handed. You see him go right-handed handed here, back at it. What's going through his head here, Rob? And I mean... How would you play this one if this is you? Well, for me, I would switch to lefty, but he seems more comfortable one-handed, right-handed putting stroke. This will be very interesting. And he, he nailed it. it. Go. But that's a one-handed putt, and that's the risk you take if you go long here. You can get that exact yeah. type of stance. We saw Gary Hester in the first round uh, put it a little bit past. Didn't end up in a situation where he struggled with the deuce putt, but Rutledge will be very happy. And you do see the fist, fist pump, pump there from the big rig. Yeah. He is in this one. As the long shot. Those shades of Jordan Spieth there, uh, cleaning that thing up uh, with some artistry. Grable going to leave down <laughs> just short again. Continuing the trend of, of near misses. I mean, misses. <laughs> little showmanship with the one-handed <laughs> tap in there. I'm, su I'm kind of surprised he didn't wear some crazy flashy shirt this week. You think that this was just he's making a statement about the hair? Maybe wanted to draw That's the attention the to the point. hair instead yeah. of the pants. Very possible, yes. Oh, wow. Different approach. I, I think that power. was a miss there. I think that was a miss in that he just left it a little short. Didn't really cost him anything, and you'd much rather be short of the hole here as John Powell taps in for his number two there. But disappointing first putt there didn't really give that ball a chance. As we are now going to move on to number seven excuse me, to number eight, seven. And the odds board will uh, cor correct itself there in terms of what's going on with uh, where the leaders are currently at. But now as you kind of start to close this front nine out, we're not seeing a big gap here as we might have thought Joey Grable might have had after, after this, at this point, excuse me, uh, kind of heading towards the back. Based on the way he's played here, it feels like he's deserving to be in the lead. It's not necessarily that the other guys haven't done enough to keep up with it, but he's come up just short. Is there a point here where maybe he starts to st play a little bit more aggressively? Does this start to creep in? Does he change strategy? Take us inside the mind of Joey Grable if you can here and explain what might be going on throughout the remainder of this front nine. Well, and seven and the eight back. right here, Zach, is the easiest two-hole stretch on the course. So it's not about playing aggressive. It's just about hitting your putts because they're both very aceable. Whoever can come out on top on seven and eight here has a very big advantage over the rest of the field because you're not going to get a ton of aceable holes on the back nine. And this is the double Joey, snaker, and he, he gets nailed it. it. Kill. He you nailed go. it. There we go. We see a little vintage fist pump right there from Joey Grable. That is something that he does really uh, often in these events. And Joey is playing for his good friends Rick Baird and Vanette Block today. Uh, very close to his heart. So hopefully he puts in a good round. And you know he's got $2 pork chops on the mind thinking about <laughs> getting out of here with the victory and heading on over with the rest of the putters. And Ooh. John Powell just doesn't get it to go he's gonna get a little bit of a rollback but not quite enough to give himself a tap in we can close this one out i it's didn't want to go. give him the commentator mush here but the yeah. two putts are fairly easy on this hole you don't tend to see bogeys on this hole it's a lot of ones a lot of twos it's very rare to see a three but certainly this is aceable 
You just don't want to be too aggressive because there is an out of bounds in play if you go too hard over that back lip. It's rare, but it has happened before. This is a very delicate light putt where you don't want to bring that back hill into play. And Rutledge just misses to the left. It's going to roll back, but not quite enough. As Rob said there, you don't want to bring that back into play. You want to give yourself an opportunity to go OB and pick up a stroke, and Michael Rutledge does not there. But he's going to leave a little bit of room to close this out, and he gets it to go. So there you go. That'll conclude the first seven holes as we head to our feature hole, hole number eight. Rob, as we go to approach this one, with the way that these guys are playing right now, Kind of how dialed in they all seem to be and how close to the hole that they've been and, and getting these aces where are you at here um through seven as we get to this one and a half right now yeah this is really interesting but definitely advantage grable going into this hole with the lead he's at now grable four of four in his last four attempts on hole eight he has aced it pretty consistently this is an aceable hole john powell is going to play the front door approach which is a delicate right to left putt got to get your timing right michael rutledge got a lot of experience with this of course he had a tendency to go out of bounds in practice rounds you can see if you potentially play off the back and look for that roll back into the hole it could work but you also have the risk of op so three very different ways to play this hole all of which has their pros and cons but ultimately this is aceable and for those who bet the over here they'll be looking for some aces on this one well, John Powell hits an ace on this hole 67% of the time. Looking to knock this one down. And he gets it to go. There and the you front go. door putt right in. That one. that one and a half with five putters remaining, it feels, feels pretty good. Feels good. And we got uh, we, a little, there we go, promotion from the putters, which I like, I like to see. Yeah. I like to see it. The free peak of John Powell in business. <laughs> Oh, Michael Rutledge looking to make this two consecutive on hole number eight here. Backing off. Look, oh, hit it. Goes back. Just missed it. Now, that, that's a little bit of an unconventional one. It's not to say that you can't play it that way. And he's disappointed that he didn't ace it there. But you don't see a lot of putters take that line, which is right off the back wall. You either see the front door or the play off the yellow brick. Be interesting to see how Graybolt plays this one. Again, known for acing this hole. has had a lot of success on hole number eight here. You know, this is one he's going to want to take advantage of to close out this front nine. He's going to have opportunity here. Looks like he's going front door as well. Same line. He missed, but he has a second chance. Comes back. He does not get it. He does not get it. Well, the sweat will continue for those of you who bet the over one and a half on hole number eight here, our feature hole of the day, as we walk away with one ace through these three putters, and that would come at the hands of John Powell as we're going to head to hole number nine here to close up the front nine of group number one. Where are you at here, Rob, in terms of how things are shaping up between these guys and who might walk away in the lead of this group? Honestly, just very impressed with all three putters so far. Other than, I think, one really bad tee shot by big rig Michael Rutledge on number six, where he left himself a tricky boost putt one-handed, it's been around the hole for a lot of these guys. No real issues on the deuce putt altogether. So all three playing really well at the moment. Well, taking a look at the live updated leaderboard there, Joey Grable and John Powell both tied at uh, two under. Michael Rutledge there, minus one right now, plus nine on the odds board and as we're going to head to the cave hole here on hole number nine we'll take a look down at the course here from the putters and see what's going on ground level with our rinkside commentator i was going to say there like a little canadian creeping into me our course side commentator guy Electric, electric. It is electric down here in Myrtle Beach. I'm with Ace, the shooter, the one and only. Ace, how are you feeling about today? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm hitting the ball good speed and uh, things are working out pretty good. Awesome. You mentioned early that, earlier that the heat might play into the game. How do you feel like about that? 
Well, the, the, the heat right now, it, it's a little bit warmer than it was, and the, the grass seems to uh, get a little crisp, so it'll, it'll make it rough. Ball move faster under the heat? No, slower. slower. Slower, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And what do you think that's going to do to your game? Uh, not much. I just have good speed on this course. I love it. Experience, experience. Yeah. Tell me, Ace, you can see here the other three. Um, they've been playing pretty well. How do you think the threesome is threesoming? Um, to be honest with you, I think they're playing a little uh, just short of everything. They're not as aggressive as I thought they'd be, and they need to pick it up right now because on the back nine, you can't get aggressive. You going to come out here aggressive today? Very aggressive. I like oh, to hear yeah. that, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, tell me, in terms of the wind, what do you think that's going to do to your game? Uh, I've been out of here plenty of times. I'll just have to adjust with it. Uh, depends upon which way it's coming in. It. Ace, you told me earlier that your wife is watching. Are you? Yes. Uh, is that who you're playing for today? Oh, definitely, definitely. She's a sweetheart, Kathy is. <laughs> Always. And she's told you no Ritalin for today or Ritalin? Uh, none. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to play well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, you can see they're coming through the cave now. This oh, is normally wow. where a lot of people fall off. How do you normally fare in the cave? Um, I like it very much. It's actually one of my favorite holes on the course. I shoot it left-handed. Um, you work uh, well in dark spaces? Oh, definitely. I, I, I'm getting old and can't see anyway. <laughs> awesome. Okay, that'll be all for Ace today. Thank you. Now, Rob, seeing them take a, take a approach here in the cave, it looks like some of the shadows might be coming into play. This is also one that we've talked about where you're going to have uh, the, the decision to make, are you going to play this right-handed or are you going to play this left-handed? Looks like Rutledge might be in uh, a little bit of trouble here coming out of the cave on hole nine. Yeah, so he played his tee shot left-handed and he mishit it. And he's left with a lengthy goose punch, which, which he's not going to make here. So... Ultimately, lefty, playing lefty is an advantage here because you have a better stance, but he just didn't hit a great putt there with his left-handed stroke in the, in the first uh, go-round. So difficult uh, end to the front nine for Michael Rutledge there. And we heard Ace Ventura talk about it. A lot of these guys have been playing a little bit more conservatively than we've expected so far. He's going to go for it in his second round today. That's what I like to hear yeah. from who I picked to win. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, Rob with the oh. Oh, oh my! Wow, oh. very big. And you know, it's funny because John Ventura talks about ah, these guys haven't played as aggressively yeah. as I thought they would. You see Rutledge go for an aggressive line, leaves it short. You see Joey go for an aggressive line in terms of or, or speed, almost goes out of bounds for two aggressive putts here on nine after Ventura called him out for leaving him a little bit short. Oh and, no! Oh wow! Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. We do not see that very often. We do not see that very often from the Tennessee Tapper, Joey Grable. <laughs> uh, Joey Grable there, uh, walking away with Bogey on this one. This is a hole that he had never aced before, but coming away with from that one with a Bogey, I mean, you're, at least from Joey's perspective, you come away and so did Rutledge, but Ron Powell closing out this group, he just has to walk away with a par here and He's going to be laughing. Interesting where he's teeing this up, which is just right in the center. We typically do not see that. And this uh, is pretty good roll there. If he was playing for a deuce, you know, yeah. he didn't take that ace line, but set himself up in a good position. And maybe that's just the product of seeing both putters go bogey bogey yeah. on number nine here. As John Powell's looking pretty solid there with the brim pad. <laughs> Well, and him and Scrabble both took a little bit more of an aggressive approach using that back wall. I would say that that's something that uh, gave us a little bit of a scare as we watched up. We look at the live leaderboard there. John Powell now in the lead through your front nine, two under. For John uh, Grable coming up there, second minus one, and Michael Rutledge at closing out this group number one at even par as of right now. As they looked ahead to the back nine, you heard. Ventura essentially called him out and say these guys haven't been that aggressive. I think Grable just is naturally an aggressive putter. Do you think Michael Rutledge, someone who knew going into this event he was an underdog, he was going to have a little bit of a hill to climb. He's sitting at the back of this pack now, but it's not by too much. Is he going to ramp things up here from an aggressive, like how aggressive he's going to play? I think he knows he has to, but there's just not a lot of scoring opportunities on this back nine. There's more on the front nine. Now, this is one of them. This putt is going to go right to left. It can be played from either side of the tee box. 
but it's a delicate putt where you just got to get your speed right. And Joey just misses that right there. And he'll have a tap and deuce. This is one of the more aceable holes on the back nine. 10 and 12 are the ones we're going to see where putters will really want to put in that ace because there's just not a lot of other opportunities to do so. Either. Joey uh, cleans that one up there, walks away with the bar here, but he's not going to be happy about that. Yet another hole that he leaves just short or misses by just an inch or two where he could have had an ace, could have yet again found a way to tie up John Powell here at earlier him missing those these opportunities let these guys kind of hang around a little bit and ron's gonna nestle that thing right Ooh. up to the front just not is maybe two more ball rotations there and that's in the hole but john powell's playing really well right now i'm very impressed with his game he had that bad bogey on number two but aside from that he's been consistently around the hole i, I really like his course management like we saw last hole where he saw bogey bogey from rutland and grable and said, you know what, I'm going to go for the two here and just you know, play not to lose a stroke on these guys. I think he's playing really well. Today. You know, interesting comment here I see in the YouTube chat on the Henry HQ right now. Abnormally Distributed says, uh, I know we shouldn't overreact to one event, but it seems like the title is up for grabs this year. Not a Verstappen situation. We talked about Joey Grable. He's the GOAT of the WPL. He finds a way to win every event. After what we saw in week number one and event number one, it felt like things were a little bit more open. We kept thinking to ourselves, hey, this is the event. Grable, Newport, those are the two guys at the top of the pack as Michael Rutledge drops in an ace there. There to we go. Get right back in and kind of to AD's point here in the chat. Is this just anyone's year? Is this a, a little bit more of an open opportunity for someone to come out of the shadows and take the title? Well, when we're looking at, at the stats that were leading into the event, there's just not a lot separating these putters. It's like one stroke on average separating a guy like Joey Grable from John Powell. So certainly it's anyone's event and could be anyone's year as we see how these players have been preparing for the course this week. <laughs> and Grable, obviously, as I mentioned, just loading up on now. I'm not sure about that strategy. Training real hard by eating pizza, steak, and meatloaf. I'm not sure that constitutes as training. Uh, John Powell, I've beaten all these guys once before. I'm ready to do it again. Looking good so far. Rutledge, I view putting as a break from work. I mean, the putting policeman, Michael Rutledge, I'd rather be out on the course too. Don't don't get me wrong. I, I think that's certainly a break from work here as we go into hole number 11, which is a, a disaster in, in play type of hole here, as we okay. saw from Rick Alessi the first time around. So you want to kind of kiss both hills on this God. Yep. I mean, that, that's. I'm not going to say it, but uh, he leaves himself in a pretty good position there. This is a hole that you just see very few ways. Yeah. And when I say very few, I'm talking about one in every 200 shots. This <laughs> hole is going to go into the hole. But you're playing for a short deuce, bud. The worst thing you can do here is miss your tee shot too far right on that first hill, and it just goes out of bounds in that spot. But there's a secondary spot where it can go out of bounds. Which is right here. And Rutledge out of bounds will take a one stroke penalty. We'll drop this ball from the spot that it went out. We're going to put this one down eight inches of relief from the outside. That's That's got to be a killer, especially coming up what he just did on the last hole. And this is Shades of Rick Alessi in event one because yeah. now you take your stroke penalty. So you're putting three right now. And this is no game. This is one of the tougher putts you're going to have on the course all day long. So this is very important. You can see him really taking his time there, and he knows he missed left right away. And the same way that Rick Alessi missed that putt in event number one. So that's going to be a disappointing four. After gaining this broke last hole, it's given back to here on hole number 11, which is, again, a really, really, really challenging hole. One of the more difficult ones on the course. Not going to be happy with himself. They're going to need to shake it off, move forward, have an opportunity or give himself an opportunity to come back here in this event with how open things have felt here so far. It, it really is anyone's game at this point. Drabel leaves that one just short there. Another opportunity to knock this one down and walk away with an even par. We are running out of time here a little bit, Rob. 
do we see any strategy changes from any of these putters the rest of the way? I don't know that you can necessarily just change your strategy on a whim here because there are so few holes down the stretch between number 13 and 18 that are aceable. You might see some more aggression on 16 and 17, but right now, this is the one, number 12, one of our featured holes where every single one of these guys in the field, especially Michael Rutledge sitting at one over right now, knows that they have to ace this hole. This is one of those where you will feel disappointed if you don't get it to go in. You have two separate lines. We saw in event number one, most of our putters chose to play it off of the rock hole, off of the rock, excuse me, and bounce it into the hole. And Michael Rutledge said that this is his favorite hole on the course. Hopefully he can get an ace and keep himself alive in this event. Well, and we're going to see this one played fa fairly differently between golfers. And see John Powell, who said he's one of the few golfers, if not the only golfer, that's not going to be playing it off the rock. So Rutledge with his putt there hits the rock. And this guy wasn't in. joking. Yeah. He loves this hole. <laughs> he loves this he hole. He was not joking. He's going to love it a little bit more to make up for what he just did on the last one. The body language is not great there for yeah. Rutledge. It's a little defeated, and I get it. Obviously, coming off of a four, it's tough to get out of that mentality, but that was a great stroke right there for big rig Michael Rutledge. Grable's going to need this one to drop. He's never recording an ace on this hole in tournament play. Going to need that to change here. It's the rock. And he just you know. didn't get the bounce. And that's what some of the competitors were saying about that rock is that it's not consistent with the kick that you'll get. Sometimes right. it bounces towards the hole. Sometimes you get the one exactly like Joey got right. And he's wondering. He's like, well, I just hit the same putt <laughs> that Rutledge did. How did yours goes in? How did mine not go in? Yeah. As he's moving on to hole number 13, we're looking to find some change. I know Joey on the course, but that's a tough one. And here we're going to get the straight putt, as you mentioned. That. Straight on at it, John Powell, one of the only competitors who will not be playing off that rock. Going direct routes and just get a misses. kickback here. Eh, not enough. Not enough. I like the swag here on John Powell, though. The hat, got the long flowing hair, the beard going on. He looks calm, he looks comfortable, and he knocks that button with authority to walk away with even far on this hole. Yeah, interesting dynamic to that hole, obviously, with the multiple ways you can play it. I personally like to play my putts um, more on the line that Powell did there, where you you take the, the variance out of the equation, right? So you might have a smaller chance of an ace, but you don't get the weird ticks no matter what. But right. Powell's still playing really one uh, well, two under through 12. His live odds in the event plus 475 now at, at 365. Joey Grable, who went off in the range of plus 175 prior to the tournament, now up to plus 220 for anyone who's looking at those live betting markets. Now, when we're talking about the way that this live outright market to shape up obviously we're looking at the board here now and through group one you want to see these guys win but the winner of group one the winner of group two these guys will advance on to a sudden death and then you do have to win sudden death to be the outright winner of today's event so that is something to take into account but is there a point here where you start to look to back grable on these in this live market it's tough because i want to back grable when i know that he can get super aggressive right. and put up a low score but these back holes here are challenging this is one where you can ace it it won't go directly in the hole you want to hit it past the hole on the right side and look for a kickback this is the line you just didn't get the right kick. kick but that is the line that you're going for here if you miss this hole on the left out of bounds does come into play as well especially if you hit it with the speed that joey just hit it with so he's going to cart his deuce there but there's just not a lot of opportunities down the stretch here to put up an ace so to back a guy like Joey at this point, I think it's counterintuitive because you want to back him in situations where you know that he can go really low. Well, we're going to see John Powell take a take his approach here and looks like he's angling himself uh, quite a lot more than what we've seen most of the putters go off at. And as well, if we took a look at the live total hole-in-ones market that went up, He's looking for the double bank. Aggressive there. And love it. And love he gets it to go. And that, that is a huge putt. Uh, the double banker, we saw someone try that in event number one. And he's opening up a two-stroke uh, lead now. Three under, really solid going into these back holes here. It's going to be hard to improve that score. But he looks pretty solid in terms of coming out of this first group. Yeah. And as I, had, as I had mentioned before, he teed off and 
Rutledge taking an aggressive approach. Wow. See, I think if he doesn't hit the hole there, there's a decent opportunity for that one to maybe have a different look off the back wall coming back to the hole, but grabs the lip of it on the way. Obviously, a little too much heat. He's going to end up with a little bit of a more lengthy putt to close out with even part. I don't think I've ever seen a putt go in on this hole that has been front door. Right. So what, once you catch that hole, you're just coming in way too hot, hoping to get a nice little kick off the back there, as you can see in the graphics. So it's aceable. We're not going to see it happen many times. We're looking at maybe two or three times out of every 100 strokes, one in 50-ish type of opportunity, one in 40-ish type of opportunity. But it can happen if you get the right kick off the bat. You just need to hit that perfect line with the perfect speed. And for John Powell here through the final five holes of today's group number one event, uh, we're going to see Powell plus 350 currently still sitting. He is three under and with a two-stroke lead over Joey Grable there. Mike Rutledge still sitting at even par. I mean, this is one of those ones he's going to want to kind of just you're not going to take your foot off the gas per se, but this is where you kind of start to work things in and uh, hopefully just kind of keep it calm, yes. keep it comfortable ahead of you. At, you know, safe, not getting any par putts when you have to. You do have a two stroke lead. You can just have to ride that one out through the remainder of this event. So he's got a bad bank there and left himself a little bit of work for two. If, if I were in, in John Powell's shoes at this point, Three under is a solid score. It would take pretty much all three players in the second group today to go four under or better for you to be eliminated from this competition. So I'm playing here as conservatively as possible as he snakes that one into the right side of the hole. But playing conservatively here, three under would be really good. Don't make a big mistake. Don't get super aggressive with the putts. It's on the other hand here where you have Joey Grable, especially Mike Rutledge, who they got to find a way to get aces on holes that are typically not aced. And taking a look at Rutledge's scorecard there, it's been a little bit of an up and down day for him, obviously leading him to be in the position that he's in, sitting last in this group, number one, but day is not over. This round is not over and anything could happen. Look to this one up, put himself in a good position. He wants to miss just to the left of the hole, get a good kick. Does. And you get a lot of that dead kick that we see a lot, which is that just that bounce off the rock up into the air. This is a very common landing spot for a lot of these spots. And Mike is disappointed, but is this a really hard hole to ace? He's going to rue that four, obviously, on hole number 11. Yeah. That was a major turning point for him. And, and talk about the fine margins in a putting competition. A one hole like that where you have a blow up would mean the end of your day. On a course like this, that's extremely challenging. There's just not a lot of makeup opportunities. Yeah, and you look at the leaderboard. Uh, he's one stroke behind Grable. That's double. He walks away with just even a bogey on that one. He's tied with Joey. And Joey himself is going to have another tough putt here to walk away with the car. And that's one of the challenges in, in all of professional in golf. When you're playing off of a, a brick or a rock, you get very random kicks sometimes, very unpredictable kicks. And this is certainly one of them. And he drains that juice spot. Cleans things up there to get away with minimal consequence. But I mean, you're gonna see a little bit of flash out of him with that mullet that he's got. And, Talked about the fact that he didn't have the flashy pants or flashy shirt this week, but he is donning a little bit of flash on his collar there. You can see it on not only him, but the rest of the field as they are wearing these chips. And if you're wondering what the chips are on the shirts and hats, of those are putt buddies, which we'll hear a little bit more about later. But they're basically just really cool ball markers and divot tools that you can see uh, over thanks to our friends at Putt Buddies. And the golfers have been given an opportunity here today to don some of that as part of their WPL Driver Series event number two apparel. And boy, does it look good. And look at these odds shifting in real time. John Powell plus 280 to Joey Grable plus 260. You look at the group that hasn't teed off yet. John Ventura now down to plus 650 was as high as 11 to 1 earlier today. 
just uh, the board is really condensing at this point as truly anyone's game at this point. Well, Michael Rutledge will leave us lead us off here. This whole and you got to think there's he's looking at this as there's a little bit of an opportunity with a door open. I, you see Powell taking the lead. He's got a couple stroke advantage here and probably going to try to play things safe throughout the rest of the way and not trip himself up. But you know, the winner of this group, the winner of group two, you're going to have three best fours heading to a sudden death situation where the slate erases. If Rutledge stays around, if he gives himself an opportunity, he could be in that final group for sure. Now, this hole in particular is where everyone is playing for as easy a deuce as possible. You do not see aces on this hole. This is a bank shot, exactly like you saw Rutledge play it, but some players will play it with different speed. And really, they're just trying to nestle it up to the hole as much as possible. A really, really challenging hole on this course. You see an average score of about 2.2 here, so above par, but uh, a really tough one. And let's see if Rutledge can hit his deuce butt here. Rob, you, you got to go out on the course. Uh, you got to play yourself in some different atmospheres, some different environments. How difficult is it to actually have your feet planted off the course like that? We saw Rutledge take a stance on the hill. Um, we saw people standing before in the wood chips. We see them standing on the rocks. We see them leaning against these walls in the cave. How difficult is that? It's extremely challenging. It's not something you experience in traditional golf when you're on a putting green. You don't have any uh, wonky stances or anything like that. I've had putts where I've had one foot in the air. I've had one <laughs> foot on the course and another off the course. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest challenges is that you get into situations that you just don't practice very often and you're forced in that moment to put together a good shot. As we see Grable here with one foot up here as well, trying to knock this in from a very similar position as where Rutledge just was. And he gets that one with ease, but he's still not going to be the happiest camper out on the course there. Based on the way his mouth has gone to the... What I love about Grable's deuce putts, he just aims for the back of the hole and yeah. puts it in there. He almost takes the break out of the equation sometimes, the way that enters those deuce putts. That's what I found here with John Powell today. I feel like when he's putting in these second putts, he's doing it with authority. The way he approaches it, the way he looks at the hole, it's look at the hole knock that thing down uh, there's not too much other thinking going on he seems to be get up knock it in gets his relief here eight inches from the edge of the hill Bang. and drains it as well all three putters with the par on 15 and all of them would have to take a par there in a hole that you just don't ace but on to number 16 here and this is the most aceable of our final three holes here on the course. It's a huge uphill hole. It's uphill about 90% of the way. The green breaks from right to left. Players got to make sure that they get their putt up top or it's going to come right back. Right. But this is one where you could potentially get it about one in 10 times as we look at our hole-in-one tracker up on screen here. 15 and a half are the odds. Got nine aces so far. Nine through uh, the first group. This over was set at minus 150. Now, either way, whether you bet this one on the future holes, 8, 12, if you bet this on the totals, you're going to have a little bit of a sweat going on for the rest of the day. You are, but over betters will feel good right now. Over betters will feel good about their spot because you get John Ventura in that yep. second group who does love to go for the aces. Starting from kind of the cave like scene there, it's going to be a little bit of a tunnel for Joey Grable, dealing with some shadows here as well steps up for his approach feet backed up against the outside of that cave there and again you'll want to see this ball start to the right of the hole and cut back left very aggressive line there and this is a challenge long putt. this is a long one for the for the deuce and you look at that scorecard from grable that they showed up on screen there really just the bogey on number nine yeah aside from that all those most missed aces right off the top coming back to bite him right now 
Yeah, this is going to be one that's going to be a little bit haunting for him, where he's going to think back to those missing by an inch, two inches, blipping out, whatever it was throughout the course of the day. Oh, and he pushed that one to the right. That's going to be a number three. And this is how it gets away from you. You go for that ace, and all of a sudden you leave yourself a long deuce. John Powell steps up, and, you know, at the end of the day, he's just going to be looking to just not do what Grable did. You've got the lead. You've got a couple strokes. Grable's the next closest person to you on the on the leaderboard here today. Walk away with the par. There's three holes remaining. Walk away with the par, and you're going to feel pretty good about yourself. Right to left. Well, why right. walk away with a par when you can walk away with an ace and, and you need to open up great. that lead? Powell is feeling himself right now at four under. This is a very, very good score for the way the course is playing. Uh, and should set him up very, very nicely to at least make the sudden death event later on today. But I'll tell you right now, Zach, there's three putters who are not out on the course right now, and all these guys are friends on tour. They respect each other, but certainly they just watch Joey Grable bogey this hole. And there was probably a couple quiet fist bumps back there because that's going to open things up for that second group. And you think of guys like Tim Talley, who've already made the finals. He's probably there thinking to himself, I get to dodge Grable in yep. all likelihood as well. That was a big miss by Joey for his. Rutledge on the rollback. Not likely to go, but not too difficult of a putt for him to knock in with a par. But yeah, Rob, I mean, talking about the door being open. Yeah, you're trying to get to that side of death, trying to get into a playoff, give yourself a position into the final event uh, on April 2nd. You had to hold number 17 and taking a look yet again at how these guys were preparing for this. I got to talk to Mr. Grable. I don't know that the the food regimen really worked. Like a couple salads maybe would have been a little bit better. I I don't know about that diet leading up to the tournament here for for Mr. Grable. I like how he didn't just say, I'm eating pizza, steak, meatloaf. I'm eating a lot of pizza, steak, meatloaf, as if he was doing it more than uh, normal. And we look at this from a live betting perspective. Guys like... Randy Reeves, John Ventura really stand out now in the live markets because of the likelihood that we will not see Joey Grable and Michael Rutledge advance here. There's yeah. really an advantage to these guys that are going off afterwards because they know the scores that they have to get. But getting five to one on a couple of putters who are have a decent chance of making that sudden death round, playoff round today, not a bad idea. That feels like a tough miss there for John Powell personally. Pull that one uh, left a little bit and goes off the bank, and it's going to have a bit, bit of a ways to go to come back. So this hole, you, we, the, the camera angle does not do it justice in terms of how far uphill this is. Right. This is a very steep incline. They call this hole the gingerbread man, but basically <laughs> players are trying to do what John Powell did just with a little bit better pace. You want to hit it off that back brick and get it back to the hole for a decent coupon as he's just been draining these deuces today. This has just been the work of a machine here from John Powell today. It's nothing has faced him. No missed putts have faced him. We haven't seen him get too high. We didn't see him get too low. This is just business as usual for him. And it's paid off as he is in the lead of group number one. But a couple holes are meeting him. Michael Rutledge stepping up with maybe an opportunity here to surpass Joey Grable on the leaderboard. That's not going to do it there, Rob. And see, you really get the gist of well it now. Short. And, and it's unfortunate for Rutledge. He, he really had to get it up there. Now, this is not a penalty because okay. the ball rolled off the tee box. So it's not a penalty stroke. It did not technically go out of bounds over a hill or anything like that. So he'll just get to re-tee, and he's still playing his number two shot. But the reality is he will have he would have had to take this hole to have any chance of making the wild card round. Uh, or the, the playoff round, excuse me, later on today. Um, I, I think if you've oh, just misses that. And that, that would have been a great first putt right there, but unfortunately it was the second putt. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Maybe having to get the machete out and go weed whack and find his ball after the first putt and didn't put him in the right mindset there for that one to go in, but it's not it. You know what? He's going to look at his scorecard. It's not the previous scorecard, but he did not have a bad showing here today. I totally agree. Totally agree. Grable 
looking to kind of right the ship a little bit. Um, little light it short. and it holds up there, but that's a disappointing effort from Joey. Who very likely needed that one to go in. So you see Randy Reeves in the background looking on, realizing the opportunity that he might have for himself coming up in a couple of minutes to kick off group number two. Randy Reeves and Joey Grable, very good friends as well. Got to enjoy some Coors Lights and pork chops with the two of them. Two dollar pork chops. At a local establishment. Last time I was in North Myrtle Beach. We got producer Jacob here with us. Jacob, two dollar pork chops. The deal sounds good, but come on, there's something something I, concerning about that. I will that, tell no? you, <laughs> the first time I heard about these two dollar pork chops, I was very skeptical. After trying them. Fantastic. Very fine German establishment in North World. <laughs> I got I got to taste it to believe it. Two bucks. Yeah. Doesn't seem real. That's what I'm saying. There's something. Hey, man, you're drawing me in that. there to buy the beers. I'll tell you how it works. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the way she rolls, but it's totally worth it. Is that, is that their loss leader? Pork chops? <laughs> there it is. Well, uh, there you go. The uh, leader of the WPL group number one here as we're going to wrap up and head to hole number 18. John Powell, four under on the day, a four-stroke lead. I don't think anybody saw that coming uh, here over Joey Grable. Whether you thought Grable was going to win or not, Four stroke lead for John Powell, Rob. Uh, that was not that. That was not something I saw coming. Yeah, definitely not. And he'll want to hold that lead. Four under is very solid. He'll feel very good about his chances going into uh, or getting into a playoff. However, want to hold that, and this is a very challenging hole to do that. It's really difficult to see this tee shot. Wow. That's pretty well done there yeah. by Michael Rutledge, but. You tee it up as close to the right border as possible. The green breaks so hard from left to right. And out of bounds is very much in play on that right hand side there. As you saw Rutledge flirting with it, but ended up with a really good putt there and ends off with a par. Well, got to be happy about that. Close out with the par, pretty good approach, but for Michael Rutledge, not the day that he would have wanted. Obviously, still um, one over here through 18, but you know what? Rob, it's like myself. I pretty much hack and whack the entire day, but I walk out of there with a four-foot putt that goes right in the middle of the hole, and I say to myself, I'm coming back tomorrow. I think I found something. So Michael Rutledge, maybe he feels like, you know what, he's on the right track to close this one out. And just so people are aware how much of an anomaly this round is by Joey Grable here. Six rounds at the U.S. Open. Didn't shoot worse than 35. Three rounds at the Masters, shot 32, 32, 33. So he's in there for a 36, and you just don't see that. It just doesn't really happen out of Joey Grable all that often. So a disappointing round for him. He'll definitely be back. Certainly one of the best, if not the best putters on tour. But uh, not some days it just doesn't work out for you. And all those early misses today, borderline misses, just caught up to him. Um, Powell there keeps it in play. Got a little sketchy, but does keep it in play and should be a pretty clean finish to what has been a tidy day for himself. And tidy day, there it tidy is. fit. The Brim Beacon, four under a par. Great round. Yeah. Really, really impressive round, uh, including the first event that we saw last Monday, Zach. I think this is the best overall performance we've seen so far. Just really had it together for the duration of the round and uh, well-deserved four under for John Powell as our three competitors waiting in the clubhouse certainly liked what they saw today as they're all very live. Yeah, and John Powell at plus 450, the outright winner, uh, or odds, uh, four odds for the outright winner here for event number two ahead of this event, obviously takes group number one there. But Rob, as you said, you're sitting in that clubhouse. You're just kind of watching and waiting for these guys to finish things up. And we know that the format of this one, it opens things up a little bit more as well because you have the three best scores, you go to the sudden death, and you're going to have an opportunity to win that and secure a spot into the final round. But it's not just about that, right? You look at some of the wild card opportunities. It's about having the next best scores of everyone. Event number one, event number two here today to get yourself into that finals on April 2nd. You see guys here today, Grable, Rutledge, kind of 
not able to keep up with Powell and how well he played. You look back to last week's event, you look at some of the scores that were posted, it feels like this one could be wide open for any of these next three golfers to grab a spot in that final round. Absolutely, and we've talked about this, Zach, because of the format of this event, this threesome has the biggest advantage of all the players that are participating in the World Putting League Survivor Series because all three of them know exactly where they stand right now. Right. So they're going to be playing knowing exactly what they need to shoot to move on in this event, and that's a big advantage for them going forward. Also, we saw them walking the course here. We saw Ace Ventura after hole number eight. We saw Randy Reeves out on the course here as well. They all know how it's playing. They know the speed. They got to watch these other putters out there, and they saw where things were missing. So overall, these guys should be dialed in for this event. We should see a couple of these golfers put in rounds of at least one under, two under, uh, and really go for it here to, to secure that spot, potentially, with John Powell in our three-man playoff later on. Well, looking at the next three golfers here, Newport, Ventura, Reeves, we saw the adjustments that were made on the live leaderboard as that first group was going and playing through. And you see the favorite of the day, Gary Grable, not have himself the best day. It's not like he's completely out of it, but you're going to kind of need one of these guys or the, the next three guys here to not really push past and yep. have the kind of day that John Powell did. Is there anyone that's piquing your interest right now? You obviously came into this one. You were a fan of Ace Ventura at the odds that you set at. Is that kind of still where you're looking? You think maybe this one opens up for Newport a little bit? I think Greg Newport's the most complete putter of the remaining three. He's just very consistent. I rhymed off the rounds that he's carded here at the Aloha. 31, 33, 32, 35, 33, 31, 34, 33, 34. Yeah. He goes low very often, very consistent with those numbers. So certainly he's up there, but Randy Reeves has shot 31 here. Ace Ventura has shot 31 here. Ace Ventura in practices this week. Apparently has gone pretty low as well, right. feeling the course. We saw him talk about that on, on the course of Guy after hole number eight. So ultimately, it's anyone's game. I do think Newport is the best putter in the field, but this is one round, Zach. This isn't we're playing 10 rounds and all of a sudden, you know, whoever has the lowest average is going on. That Newport would have a big advantage. This is one round. Any of these guys can call. Well, you are joined here today by myself, Zach Phillips, and Rob Zola to continue to break down World Putting League Survivor Series event number two as we take a look at group number two here of this event. We're going to head on over to uh, Newport, Reeves, and Ventura as they're going to look to compete.